Startup script, red bar achieved. Go ahead and turn on the hydraulic pump to low. Pressure on low. Ready to run the spectrum? We're ready. 54,000 pound up low. Starting. Pacing on left four, 4,500. Needles are up, are releasing now. Church is certainly a big part of the answer, both because you have really good weather here this time of year and you have some really nice objects in the sky. I'm personally excited about uh, having Dream Chaser here at Dryden. I can't think of a better place to be testing a vehicle like this than bringing it right out here to the Edwards Dry Lake bed, which is very historic in its own right. Three. Release, release, release. I have enormous affection for this place, its people and its vision for the future of the world of flight. And I believe that whenever I have the privilege of visiting here again and years ahead, and ask someone, what's new? There'll always be something.
Ladies and gentlemen, could I please have you stand for the presentation of colors by the Air Force, Edwards Air Force Honor Guard. Please present the colors. Thank you. The national anthem this morning was uh, performed by Kaylee Armstrong, granddaughter of Neil Armstrong, accompanied by Taylor Sullivan. Thank you. That was fantastic. <laughs> Good morning. I'm David McBride, Center Director. Please have, a seat, have your seats. Before we get started this moment, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence for one of our lost heroes. Bill Dana, one of our inspirations, our friend, and a friend of, and colleague of Neil Armstrong passed away this past week. Bill's presence is terribly missed, but his memory and legacy continues with us here today. Welcome and thank you for being with us today. At the outset, I'd like to introduce and welcome our special guest today. Welcome to the Dryden family. Eric Dryden, Hugh Dryden's grandson, with his wife, Lisa, and their children, Logan, Matthew, and Tristan. <laughs> the Armstrong family, Miss Janet Armstrong, she was part of the exciting X-15 years here at the center with Neil Armstrong's sons, Rick and Mark Armstrong, Mark's wife, Wendy, and their children, Andrew and Kaylee. <laughs> Neil's sister, June, and her husband, Jack Hoffman. <laughs> and our special guest, Grace Walker Weisman, 
and the Joe Walker family, Miss Judy Dana, and Bill, Bill Dana's daughter, Jan Sebring. Welcome to our distinguished guests, U.S. Representative, the Honorable Kevin McCarthy of California's 23rd District. Maybe like, I'll go to the end and uh, we'll do one, uh, one applause. <laughs> representing, representing U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein, Ms. Elizabeth Delgado Seelman. Cal <laughs> California State Senator Steve Knight of the 21st District. NASA Administrator Charles Charlie Bolden, NASA's Chief Technologist David Miller, NASA's Associate Administrator of Small Office Business Programs Glenn Delgado, and the NASA Ames Deputy Center Director Lou Braxton. Locally, Palmdale Mayor Jim Ledford, Tehachapi Mayor Phil Smith, and Vice Mayor of Lancaster Marvin Christ. Deputy to LA County Supervisor Michael Antonovich, Mr. Norm Hinckley. And from the center, from the Edwards Air Force Base Community, General Michael Brewer, Commander 412 Test Wing, Colonel Paul Meyer, Vice Commander Air Force Test Center, Colonel Lars Hoffman, Commander U.S. Air Force Test Pilot School, and the Antelope Valley Board of Trade, represented by Ms. Kathy Hart. We are here today to celebrate and honor the designation of our center is the NASA Neil A. Armstrong Flight Research Center, and the Western Aeronautical Test Range is the Hugh L. Dryden Aeronautical Test Range. This designation is a result of Congressional Resolution 667, championed by the Antelope Valley Board of Trade and authored by our Congressman Kevin McCarthy, and signed into law by President Obama, Public Law 11375 in January of this year. Administrator Bolden directed directed that we implement the name change effective March 1st. We're here to honor the contributions of two men that had significant roles in placing America as a preeminent world leader in aerospace. Both men provided inspiration in their actions and in their contributions to the state and place of aerospace in the nation today. As long as history is written, both men and their contributions to aeronautics, aerospace, and exploration will be remembered and recalled. While we are changing our name, we will continue to honor the legacy of Hugh L. Dryden. Hugh Dryden prepared America for the space age and remains one of the world's pivotal figures in both aeronautics and space flight. Dr. Dryden, when asked about the value of flight research with respect to the X-15 program, stated that the purpose is to separate the real from the imagined and make known the overlooked and unexpected. To that end, our center vision will remain to separate the real from the imagined through flight and our mission will remain advancing technology and science through flight. We will maintain and recommit to the agency's vision and mission, researching for new heights and revealing the unknown for the benefit of humankind and driving advances in science and technology and space exploration to enhance knowledge, education, innovation, economic vitality, and stewardship of Earth. Our core values never change. Safety, excellence, teamwork, and integrity in all that we do. It is now my pleasure to introduce California State Senator Steve Knight, representing the 21st District. Steve grew up here on the base and is no stranger to the X-15. Well, it is my distinct pleasure to be here. You know, you can't drive across the lake bed without getting a smile on your face uh, or a tear in your eye. Uh, I have a little bit of history out here, and uh, I wanted to introduce someone who's special to me. Uh, we have uh, Colonel Larry Hoffman here, who's one of my dearest friends. I grew up with him out in Edwards Air Force Base. He's United States Air Force Test Pilot School Commandant here with his wife, Jill. And um, we know a little bit about uh, growing up at Edwards, just like the Armstrong family did, and the Walker family, and the McKay family, and the Dana family. This is uh, where history is made. Um, I'm going to use a line my father made in 1997 on the 30th anniversary of his flight and the 50th anniversary of Jaeger's flight was, these are the good old days today. I think people believe that things happen in the 50s and 60s and nothing happens anymore. 
and he was saying, these are the good old days. Edwards is where it happens. Nobody exemplifies that more than Neil Armstrong. From what he did in probably one of the most successful platforms that NASA's ever had to his one small step, Neil Armstrong made America. And I say that not lightly. Uh, what we did in the 60s and what he accomplished put us on the map. It showed what American ingenuity is and it showed what we were doing. So I say that uh, thank you and thank you to uh, Congressman McCarthy for making this happen. This, uh, this exemplifies this area and, uh, and I appreciate everything that NASA does for us. In that note, I would like to uh, offer a resolution from the California State Senate um, in honor of the Neil A. Armstrong Flight Research Center. And I think that it is fitting that uh, we name this after an X-15 pilot. Well, I have a little bit uh, in my heart for all those X-15 pilots, but uh, also for someone who took that small step and that giant leap for America. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce United States uh, Representative Kevin McCarthy. He's our representative from California's 23rd District. Well, thank you very much. Um, I first want to thank David, not only for making this happen today, but for the leadership of NASA. He's never forgotten where we come from. You know, he takes the legacy of the past and applies it to a changing future. And that's what we're all looking for. I also want to thank Kathy Hart for the Antelope Valley Board of Trade. They kept this fire burning for nine years. And that takes a great deal of responsibility to make happen. I want to honor that um, Charles Bolden's here. We thank you for your work. We thank you for what you're going to do in the future. We appreciate you coming here and seeing the capabilities that we have as well. A special thanks to State Senator Steve Knight. You think about the legacy that he knows, about where he's been, and what he continues to carry on. He's been a great part of making this happen. To be here today, it took an act of Congress. <laughs> you know what the little sad part? I had to pass it twice. We got it through the House one time, and the Senate, in the Senate wisdom, kind of ran out of time. So we passed it again. But with everything you hear about Washington, I'm very proud to say nobody voted against it. Most overwhelming vote you could have. So we're here today to honor two men, their amazing accomplishments. It's the Neil A. Armstrong Flight Research Center and the HU Drill, uh, Dryden Aeronautic Test Range. We all know the history of both men. But what's most ironic when you sit here and think of Neil Armstrong, you wonder in somebody's life, did they make a difference? Well, it's not just everybody in America, but everybody in the world. Where were you July 20th, 1969? Everybody was watching. Everybody was wondering. His famous quote, but then when he put that footstep down, and he made that footprint on the moon, it's still there today the legacy that lasted. But what we're here today, before he put that footprint down on the moon, he put a footprint down right here. You look at the two instruments next to me. Conceptual. He was a part of it before we even got there. The 24 hour, 2400 hours that he flew, seven years that he was a part. But to me, that he never forgot where he came from. He knew what he was doing for mankind, but he also he knew what he was doing for everybody else. But in that, in that video that we saw, I'm very taken by what he said on the 50th anniversary of 1996. When he talked about NASA, when he talked about his days here. He said, my years here were wonderful years. Dryden was a most unusual place. It's enormous curiosity, wonderful intensity an unbelievable willingness 
to attempt the impossible here. If you wonder what our quest is today, to never lose sight. To be able to get the quest of the impossible. And that's what we still drives us here today. And before Neil Armstrong was here, you had Hugh Dryden. Think of the accomplishments that he made. Think of the history that he put forward. He helped develop the P-51 Mustang, the X-15 aircraft that launched. When NASA was created in 58, Dryden became the first deputy administrator. That's pioneering. That's setting a framework so others could propel. Unfortunately, he passed away of cancer in 1965, just a few years before he could fulfill in the Apollo 11 mission. But we will never forget him. And today, we're here to honor the legacy of the two men. But not just honor them. Continue that footprint for the next generation. So we could go further and continue to lead the entire world when it comes to space. Thank you, and God bless. At this time, I'd like to introduce the Honorable Charles F. Bolden, Charlie Bolden to us, Administrator of National Aeronautics and Space Administration. His 34-year career with the Marine Corps included 14 years as a member of the NASA Astronaut Office. After joining the office in 1980, he traveled to orbit four times aboard the space shuttle between 1986 and 1994, commanding two of those missions. Charlie was confirmed NASA Administrator July 2009. Charlie. Thanks very much, David. Um, it, it's quite a pleasure to be here. And um, Senator Knight, thank you very much for your comments. I, we were just saying, I, did, I said, you know, I didn't realize your dad had been an F-15 pilot. He said, oh, yes. And uh, we have some friends in common who, uh, Senator Knight probably has some real good memories, like my son reminds me, why can't I do what you used to do? You probably say, why can't you do what your dad used to do? And it's because your dad and me and other people, we were crazy. And, uh, and so we try to keep you all from doing the things that we did. Um, Congressman McCarthy, I cannot thank you enough for this entire crowd for your tenacity and uh, really leading the charge on bringing us here today. As you said, this took an act of Congress and uh, so be it. Uh, but I, I, I thank you for coming out. Members of the Dryden and Armstrong family, uh, thanks to all of you for being here with us today. This, this is your day. Um, I also want to take an opportunity to recognize one of members of my staff who, who, who was overlooked, but that's uh, Associate Administrator for Communications, David Weaver, and he plays a very key role. David, raise your, at least raise your hand. Yeah. And then the other person who I don't think left, Marie, where are you? Marie Fullerton. There's Marie. Uh, I want to acknowledge the presence of Marie Fullerton, the, the widow of, of Gordon Fullerton, who was uh, a mentor of mine when I first got to Houston in the astronaut office. And, and Gordo, re he did what, what not too many people do and what not enough people do. Uh, he left the astronaut program, came back to his roots, came back out here, out here to, to, to uh, Edwards and Dryden and, uh, and continued his legacy. And, and uh, so, Marie, it's really special to have you here with us today. Thank you very much. Today, it's, um, I'm joining everyone else because it's our opportunity to recognize two icons of aerospace engineering and excellence. From Hugh Dryden's experiences and work with airplanes when, when the field was really in its infancy, to Neil Armstrong's work as a test pilot and historic footsteps on the moon, these two help pioneer a field that sustains us today in ways that could hardly have, have been imagined. Hugh Dryden was considered an aeronautical genius who pushed the boundaries of high-speed flight beginning in 1931. Dryden's ex expertise at the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or NACA, and then NASA established America's leadership in space and organized the research that led to our first steps in space. His organizational leadership was at the root of Neil Armstrong's most spectacular flight achievements from the X-15 to his 1969 first footsteps on the moon. If President Johnson's eulogy, uh, in President Johnson's eulogy for Dryden, he said, and I quote, Hugh Dryden's death ended nearly 50 years of single-minded devotion and effort 
by one of the most distinguished civil servants this country has ever known. Beloved by all his associates and respected throughout the world, Dr. Dryden, more than any other man, led us into the age of jet aircraft and space exploration. President Obama, on the occasion of Neil Armstrong's passing, said, and I quote, future generations will draw inspiration from his spirit of discovery, humble composure, and pioneering leadership in setting a bold new course for space exploration. The imprint he left on the surface of the moon and the story of human history is matched only by the extraordinary mark he left on the hearts of all Americans." Unquote. This wonderful center continues to blaze new trails in aeronautics and the technologies that support our path to Mars. Its Earth science work has immediate value for understanding our changing planet. And it also supports our broader science portfolio and the human spaceflight program, which even now is reaching for new destinations. I know Hugh Dryden would have been amazed at the range of activities this center is involved in now. Neil Armstrong would be proud to be so intimately connected to this center where he served as a research pilot from 1955 to 1962 and was part of the team that conceptualized and tested the lunar landing training vehicle. Neil may be remembered best as an astronaut, but he never forgot his Navy roots and naval aviation heritage as he lived out his life as an active member of the Golden Eagles. I cannot think of a more appropriate way to honor Neil, who broadened our understanding and achievements in aeronautics and space exploration, than to name this center for him, where he worked at his first passion, aviation. Similarly, the center's Western Aeronautical Test Range becomes the Hugh L. Dryden Aeronautical Test Range. It's a place where the planes of tomorrow so passionately studied and promoted by Hugh Dryden from his childhood onward, take flight toward the future. And I will take the, 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 I'll take the opportunity to come off my script here to say something about uh, what this naming means to the, the employees at, at, uh, at the Dryden Test Range. You know, up until now, uh, its name was the Western Flight Test Range or something like that. Uh, when I talk to folk out here, they talk of the excitement of the employees at, at the Dryden Test Range uh, at finally being able to identify with an American icon and an aviation pioneer. So that's a big deal for the folk who are now at the Dryden Test Range. Both Dryden and Armstrong, you can, you can applaud. Both Dryden and Armstrong are pioneers whose contributions to NASA and our nation are unequaled. This renaming is a fitting tribute that honors both their legacies. Uh, and before I present the first montage to the, to the Dryden family, I do want to take an opportunity to, to talk about why we're here and why Hugh Dryden and Neil Armstrong came here. They weren't thinking about themselves. They weren't even thinking about the day. They were thinking about the distant future. And uh, you know, Eric, Thank you for representing your family, and I know you're going to come up in a moment, but, but I want to thank you for bringing you know, Logan, Matthew, and Tristan out to, to uh, have an opportunity to be here to celebrate uh, their great granddad. This is a big deal, guys. <laughs> I know I, I asked, I think, now let me see, your Matthew. I asked Matthew, the, I think Matthew is the eldest. I said, Matthew, what brings you out here today? And I didn't know who he was. And he was really quiet. He didn't say anything. I said, yeah, I know. Your mom said you had to come. He said, yeah. Well, Matthew, this is why your mom said you have to come, because this is a big day for the Dryden family. So thanks very much for listening to your mom. Uh, Logan and Tristan, thanks to you all for listening to your mom and being here. Uh, thanks to all of you in the Dryden family. And now I'd like to present a montage to the Dryden family uh, with the signed bill uh, that, that Senator McCart the Senator, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, yeah, you never know. Uh, and let me tell you, that was not a plug, that was not an anything, because I, I get in big trouble if I do that. So that was a slip. Uh, but Eric, if you would come up right now, I'd like to make a presentation to you on behalf of the, for the family.
Well, I'd like to thank uh, the administrator and all of NASA for inviting our family here. We uh, certainly have enjoyed uh, spending the day with the Armstrong family yesterday and touring this amazing facility. Uh, I've never been here before. I was too young when the first dedication uh, ceremony took place. Uh, it has been an absolute honor to share the Dryden name uh, with this amazing test facility and all of the employees here at NASA for the uh, past 38 years. I, I knew my grandfather for five months before he passed away. Uh, I do know that he would be extremely proud and honored to pass the torch, so to speak, to an amazing engineer, test pilot, astronaut, uh, a true uh, aerospace pioneer, Neil Armstrong. Thank you very much for allowing us to share this with you. Eric, thanks very much for your remarks. And um, as I get ready to move to the, to the Armstrong family, I, Kaylee, I want to thank you again. You know, Kaylee and I were together in Anacortes, Washington, geez, a month or two ago, uh, when Kaylee also sang the national anthem at the, at the uh, christening of, of uh, a naval research vessel named for her dad. And it was at that time that I learned of her incredible voice. Uh, and it was even better today. So I know you're, I was watching your father beam uh, with pride as you sang. They, sometimes she told me they sing together. I think she got it from him. So, so Kaylee, thank you very much. I, um, I, I'm gonna sort of close out because I have a letter from President Obama commemorating this occasion and the contributions of these two men to our national life that I'd like to read now. And, um, and the letter is actually on one of the plaques I'm gonna present, so I'm reading from that from my paper, and I quote, I extend my warmest wishes to the Armstrong family and all those gathered at the Hugh L. Dryden Flight Research Center in Edwards, California, as, as it becomes the Neil A. Armstrong Flight Research Center. With one small step, Neil Armstrong captured the hope and resolve of our nation, making a historic milestone for mankind. He helped renew America's commitment to innovation and exploration. As he and his colleagues at NASA pushed the very boundaries of science and space, they showed us that anything is possible with enough drive and imagination and that the sky is no limit for what we can achieve. A true American hero, Neil reflected the best of our nation's spirit, not only in space but also here on Earth. He served with unwavering patriotism in the Korean War and applied his talents to public service at NASA. His leadership in business and academia empowered so many to use science as a means to reach their dreams. And his powerful example continues to challenge us all to set our sights on new horizons. I was pleased to sign into law the legislation that renamed this special facility where Neil Armstrong once worked in his honor. And I am pleased to join in celebrating the legacy of another aerospace icon who paved the way for Neil and so many others as the Western Aeronautical Test Range recently became the Hugh L. Dryden Aeronautical Test Range. Congratulations to the entire Armstrong family. May this rededicated center inspire all those committed to reaching ever higher. Signed, Barack Obama. Now I'd like to present this mon montage to the Armstrong family with the president's signed letter. And Rick and Mark, I think both of you are going to come up. To, they're going to do a, a, a brother act here. We're grateful to be here today in the celebration with Administrator Bolden, distinguished members of government, and the families of Dryden and Thompson and Walker and Fullerton and Dana, and so many others, past and present. 
that make this Flight Research Center the inspiring place that it has been and continues to be. In 1939, a brilliant mathematician and aerodynamics researcher by the name of Hugh Dryden became a member of the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. About the same time that a young boy from Ohio was learning to build model airplanes out of paper and balsa wood and using an X-Acto knife to make small alterations in the airfoils. From that time onward, both shared the same goal, to design airplanes that would go higher and faster and with greater stability and control. Hugh helped to create and define this amazing place, a center for excellence where, the, where this sort of flight research could be achieved. But he would need pilots. Meanwhile, Neil came to the conclusion that he would need to become a pilot to really understand how to design a better flying machine. So you see, it is right and good that these two men should be inextricably linked. May this center flourish as long as we have the dreams to fly faster and farther than ever before and to make real that which we have imagined. On behalf of the family, I would like to thank you all for, very much for coming out to the desert this morning. The renaming of this facility to the NASA Armstrong Flight Research Center touches directly on two of Dad's passions, flying and engineering. If you could have just worked a golf course in there somewhere, <laughs> we would have hit the trifecta. <laughs> in preparation for this event, I've been uh, reading a few bit books on the work that went on here back in the day. One phrase I've encountered a number of times was, has to do with an airplane that has a low lift drag ratio. And I remembered something from when I was about 10. On dad's desk in our house in Houston, sitting amongst the various airplane models, was a white block on a stand. It had two little rectangles sticking out of the side, kind of like wings. And, and on the back, on the, on the end of the, of, of the block were the letters L slash D equals zero. I asked him what that meant, and he said, that means it flies like a brick. <laughs> that explanation made no sense to me at the time, <laughs> but, but I think now I understand it. Of course, Dad is typically thought of as a pilot and an astronaut, but as he has said on a number of times, he considered himself an engineer first. In one speech he said, science is about what is, engineering is about what can be. I can assure you that he applied that engineering methodology to many things in his life. For example, when we lived up in Juniper Hills, there are a number of stories about Dad and his various cars. One in particular has to do with a 47 Dodge that he found broken down by the side of the road. It turned out that it belonged to someone here on the base and he found him and bought it for $50. He intended to rebuild the engine and used it to carpool to work. It was a good plan. However, according to my mom, Dad didn't really know much about automobile engine repair. Perhaps he thought that he was an engineer and was trying to fix an engine. <laughs> he, re he really wanted the car, so how hard could it be? He took the, uh, he took the uh, engine apart piece by piece, and he placed 
the parts on towels and pieces of newspaper on the floor in our house in the order that they came off. That way he knew how to put it back together. No problem, well, <laughs> it was a pretty small house. It was more like a cabin, and little kids have to play. <laughs> Think things on the floor, you know. I have no doubt that I was admonished frequently not to touch anything, because if I, the parts got out of order, well, that was going to be bad. <laughs> to this day, if I see something on a towel, <laughs> I tend to leave it alone. <laughs> e even if I put it there. <laughs> How long did this whole operation take, you might ask? About a year. <laughs> so that might qualify as a miracle, as far as I'm concerned. Or, or maybe it's just another example of looking at something and seeing what can be. As you saw in the clip, Dad liked to come here now and then and just hang out and talk about what was, what was going on, what was new. And I like to think with this renaming that it will be even easier for him to keep track of what's going on in the world of flight research. I also hope it will inspire others, particularly young people, to want to learn more about the uh, STEM field so that one day they can achieve the great things just as those here at the Flight Research Center have been doing for so many years. I'd like to close uh, with this. A, a year or so ago, I was talking with my, with my daughter about dad, she was about 12, and she said, you know one thing I remember about Grandpa Neil? Every time an airplane flew over, he would look up at it. Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you to Senator Knight, Congressman McCarthy, General Bolden, the Armstrong and Dryden families. Also want to take a moment to thank another group, the uh, Air Force Museum. They went through a lot of effort to get the replica X-15 put together for this event. So thank you to, to their efforts and, and the volunteers. <laughs> like our Air Force counterparts at Muroc and later Edwards Air Force Base, uh, through the years, this place, this center, has gone through many, many name changes. It was founded as the National, National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, NACA Langley Memorial Laboratory, Muroc Field Unit in 1946. This was Langley's high-speed flight station fielded to advance the postulation that man could in fact travel faster than the speed of sound. Since that time, we've been called for NACA, the Muroc Flight Test Unit, the High-Speed Flight Research Station, the High-Speed Flight Station. After the establishment of NASA, we were called the Flight Research Center. In 1976, we were very honored to be named the Hugh L. Dryden Flight Research Center, subsequently the Ames Research Center, Hugh L. Dryden Flight Research Facility, back to the Hugh L. Dryden Flight Research Center, and now we are honored to be called the Neil A. Armstrong Flight Research Center. This change is an immense honor for the center. Neil Armstrong was the first man to stand on the moon. He was also an engineer, a research test pilot at this center for NACA and NASA. Throughout our history with NACA and NASA, our ties to the agency and, and name have changed, but throughout all the changes, the work we do remains consistent. We fill, fulfill a national need for our capabilities and competencies. Our role throughout the, our history is and has been the integration of complex flight systems and their safe test and flight operations. Though we've diversified from our traditional aeronautics base, the work we continue to do in science and space exploration utilizes our abilities to understand the problem and its connection to flight and understand the vehicle and to safely clear the envelope. So to you in the back, the employees of Dryden and now the Armstrong team, we have the ability to make complex systems work safely and that will not change. The successful completion of our mission requires all of you working as a, in a coordinated manner. Pilots and engineers, mechanics and technicians, administrative, finance, facilities, legal, acquisition, security, and communications. It requires all of you 
to fulfill our mission. So to you, the current employees of Armstrong, its retired alumni, and the future employees whose careers have not yet begun, you will be remembered for the contributions to the advancement of aerospace and our care for the planet Earth and our exploration for the solar system of beyond. Your contributions and impacts will be felt. Now is the time for change, and now is the time to commit to our existing vision, missions, and values. We fly, we explore, we measure, we reveal, and we discover the overlooked and unexpected for the benefit of the nation and for the benefit of humankind. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite everyone to join us outside out in front of the Building 4800. We'll have a flyby and a commemorative unveiling of our new sign. Uh, if you'll uh, leave through the, the doors to your right, came in, come, leave the, the way you came in, and gather out front in front of the white X1E. Uh, be careful on the, on the loose rocks. Uh, gather around, and we'll have a flyby and uh, unveiling shortly. Thank you.